Well, for more, let's speak to our international affairs editor, Armin Georgian. Hello to you, Armin. Um, two different sides of what's happening there, as we heard from the U.S. and from Russia. I guess a big question is, will anything concrete come out of this G20 meeting? I think it's maybe worth just reminding everyone that the G20 is not a permanent institution. It doesn't have headquarters. It doesn't. Uh, it's it's not like the European Union or something like that. And it also doesn't issue legally binding resolutions like the UN can do at times. So it basically makes political declarations, and then it's up to all the members to implement them as they see fit. And what I suspect they're going to do is to urge an urgent resolution to the grain crisis, uh, for the, the, this issue of grain exports being blocked in Ukrainian ports uh, in order to ease, the, ease the, in the global food crisis. Uh, but the problem for the G20 is that that issue is really a dynamic between Turkey and Russia and, and Ukraine. It is that kind of diplomatic triangle that uh, is in the center of any possible future breakthrough on this question of grain. And at the moment, actually, uh, Turkey's position looks more and more fragile when it comes to balancing Russian and Ukrainian interests, because uh, Turkey's ambassador uh, in Ukraine has been summoned to explain why uh, Turkey released a Russian-flagged cargo ship, which the Ukrainians say contains stolen Ukrainian grain. So in a nutshell, when Turkey does something that is, so to speak, uh, friendly to Russian interests, Ukraine is going to have obviously a big reaction to that and vice versa. So one wonders for how long can Turkey, which is a member of the G20, but how long is its position tenable and can a breakthrough actually be made? As I said, that's really a diplomatic, this kind of dr diplomatic trilateral uh, channel that is going to do something. If anything, it's not the G20 that can that can achieve such a breakthrough. Yeah, and that kind of brings us to the next question. The West making a lot about how much Russia is isolated. Is that perhaps a little bit overblown? Well, obviously, the Western narrative w would have everyone believe that Russia is isolated. But if you look at the BRICS, br uh, Brazil, Russia, obviously, India, China, and South Africa, they have not lined up behind Ukraine. Uh, they represent 42% of the world's population. And uh, within the G20, you've got other powers that are not in the BRICS, such as Mexico and Argentina, which have been critical of Russia's position. I think it's to say more critical than, for example, India or China, but they have also stopped short of imposing sanctions on Russia. So you've got countries that have, you know, like India, uh, that are seen, at least in the West, to have sort of lined up behind Russia and others that have not lined up be behind Russia, but nevertheless are trying to be, so to speak, neutral and, you know, say we've got to keep the dialogue open. We can't have sanctions because that would kill dialogue. So that would be, you know, a, a Mexican or Argentinian position, for example. So at the G20, the Western members that want a much harder line uh, and even talked about kicking Russia out of the G20, that's simply not going to happen given the group dynamics here. All right, Armin, thank you very much. Armin Georgian, French 24th, foreign editor.